Well, hello again. Uh, welcome to another video of Biantiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill, and today I've got a cracking haul video to show you. I'm a UK reseller, I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, and jewellery, and flip them for a profit. Today I'm going to show you what I picked up at my local flea market, and I've got a couple of really, really nice pieces and a little bit of work in stock. So stick around, hopefully, you'll enjoy. I'm going to start off with this little thing. So we have a brass, hammered brass and seamed coachman's boot with stirrup. It's nicely done. Now this would be a stick stand or an umbrella stand. It's got a good bit of edge to it. Nice buckle on the front of the shoe there. Now this cost me £20 this morning, uh, when I bought it I thought, do you know what, it's going to be about £70, quid, £75 of anybody's money just as a decorative piece. Then I had a look on the internet and yes people are selling the Coachman boot for £75 to £100. Then I stumble on two people selling them with the stirrups. Have a look at the prices in just a minute, they're asking for one of these. Um, and one of them is identical with the lace, the buckle, everything. And you'll have a shock in your life. So for £20, I haven't decided what I'm going to sell it for yet. But it's um, certainly anywhere from £75 and up. But just a nice little unusual quirky item. For £20, that was a real good bargain. Next piece I bought <laughs> is homemade. Somebody has got a piece of skirting board, <laughs> got small golf clubs, chopped them up, and actually mounted them onto this um, skirting board to make a court hook, a court rail. So you'd secure that to your wall and hang your courts on. Isn't that cool? Now, if you love golfing, that's really wicked. It's got, they are old clubs. No, they're not just copies. These are old original clubs that they've chopped up. And they've actually done a good job as well. They've uh, bracketed them on tidy with um, Allen keys and everything. Now I paid a fiver this morning. As a bit of upcycling or decorative art, I think that's got to be about 20, 25 pound of anyone's money. So it's just a really nice, unusual, um, piece to be totally honest with you and if you love golf then you're gonna love this and I haven't seen them before if the gentleman does any more of these to be honest with you, I'm gonna buy them all and I'm gonna start putting them on eBay because that is cool and he's done a cracking job of mounting them there's no real value in a lot of these old clubs um, so turn them into court hooks was a genius idea and for a fiver <laughs> I just thought it's something different something cool Now I haven't had crystal for a while, um, I had so much crystal I've been staying away from it, I've been buying a lot more variety. However, I stumbled on a collection of crystal this morning that was just too good to leave there. So we start off with this boxed Royal Dalton Crystal by Webb Corbett. Look at that. You've got a fine square crystal decanter. It's never been out of his box. Beautiful quality, and I mean it is real good quality. Top crystal, that was a fiver, in its original box. If you wanted to buy something like that from the shop brand new when it was being made, you're probably talking 100 pound for that, you can't, gotta be. Um, second hand now, that's still gotta be 30, 40 pound, you can't, in this box. Still a nice item.
Then I had a Bohemian Crystal Czechoslovakian vase. Again, in this box. Let's give you a little look. It doesn't look a lot in the box, does it? But it is quite a nice crystal piece. Oh, bless. That tells you everything you need to know. They had this for their 30th wedding anniversary, never took it out of the box. And then it ends up on a boot sale. The decanter was a fiver, by the way, and the vase here was three pounds. So you've got a really nice frosted, gilded, Czechoslovakian, Bohemian vase. It's got its original label, original box, and in beautiful condition. And again, that's not gonna be fortunes, but somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds for that. show when people get all this stuff for wedding presents it's never used just gets in the box gets put away this next set is fine lead crystal cut lead crystal produced for Debenhams and the pattern is embrace two champagne flutes very much like the Jasper Conran pattern that you get there's a pair of champagne flutes here and they really are beautiful No signature, but a real nice, elegant champagne flute. They were three pound again, and again, they're gonna be 20 quid, 10 pound a stem in the box. That's a beautiful little uh, set of glasses. To be honest with them prices, you could afford to keep them and just use them. Now this next piece, <laughs> I actually didn't realise what I was buying when I bought it. Um, I saw a barometer on the table, picked it up, how much. It's got a few dents and the crack on the glass. She said a pound. One pound. This is an 1839 to an 1860 holosteric barometer by Gardner & Co of Glasgow. So, which basically means for you and me, it come off a ship, it's maritime. There's the uh, name there. It's got 2004 by I'm assuming that's um, like a, a pattern number or something like that. But I've researched the uh, the maker. And when they were at this address, it was 1839 to 1860. So we have a beautiful barometer. Now, as I just said, it cost me a pound. Now, bear in mind, it's got broken glass. It's dented on where you hold it here. Got a little dent by there and it's got a dent on the back here. But they're asking for holosteric barometers between 100 and 500 pound on eBay. I know it shocked me too. And a lot of them are getting two, three, four hundred, no problem at all. So I haven't got a clue what to put on this one as of yet. This is probably gonna end up on an auction and I'm going to leave it run and see where it goes and let it find its own level. At the end of the day, it cost me a pound. Um, and we'll see where it finishes up. But um, what a beautiful thing. Needs a bit of attention, but for a pound, you know, somebody got robbed. And it wasn't me. Beautiful, beautiful bit of scientific instrument. As usual, all photographs will be spliced in after each piece. Sticking with my one pound buys, we have E.T. <laughs> we 
we have a talk in ET. Now, he's had too much to drink. His eyes have rolled back in his head. They are in there. Uh, you know, they are in there. They just roll back in his head. And the voice box does, to some degree, work. But again, it cost me a pound. So again, I'm just gonna have a bit of fun with that and see where it goes. But a bit of nostalgia, I remember E.T. as a kid. Um, I have no idea what it's worth, probably a tenner. Just a bit of fun. Somebody will take it apart, repair the eyes, service the voice box and get that cleaned up and going. I have no doubt. Just an interesting little curio. Next piece cost me a little bit of money, but I rate it, I really do. So we have a trivet, or a trivet table, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of people call them candle reflectors when they're solid top, but this is basically a tilt top table. Now, it's 19th century. I'm thinking it's late Georgian to early Victorian. Beautiful, beautiful quality. There'll be photographs in. Look at the quality of that roll top. Now, I had to pay £30 for it. However, I have had these before, and I've sold them between £120 and £150 for one of these. Now, you can get uh, little tables like this and sell them for 20 and 30 quid. but I can tell you now, they're lightweight, they're flimsy, and most of the time, they're early 20th century. This is a real good one. Got beautiful patina on the back of it where it hasn't been cleaned. Big massive slab of brass there for this tilt top. And I can tell you now this is probably three or four kilos in weight. So it's a really nice piece. Love the stem with all the nopes. Cost me 30 pounds. I don't see it going for less than 100. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. We'll find out. Next piece is quite relatively new, but it's got a name behind it. So, it's Parker Pens. Parker Pens, the ones you want are the early mottled ones with the gold nibs and things. But this was just a really nice set. Even the box itself is heavy in quality. Then you open it up and you have a double pen set. Now I haven't priced them yet but it really is a nice quality pen set. Anyway, it cost me £1.50 for a Parker pen set like that. I would think it's 10 to 20 pound, but it wouldn't surprise me if I got on there and found out people were paying 30, 40 quid from. It's just a nice little thing for £1.50. Next piece we have is a little, I don't know, galvanised um, steel maybe, lockbox. Unfortunately no key, probably for documents or something like that. It's got a maker's mark on the side or inside, WFH Clerkenwell. Maybe a solicitor's box or something like that. I'll splice in a photograph. And the, uh, there's a name on the uh, lock as well. Again, I'll splice that in. The lock and that's all there. Just need to find a key to match that. To be honest with you, an old wardrobe key might do the job. And we'll have a nice little strong box. It's a nice little thing, cost me three pounds. Even if I don't get a key and somebody just has their decorative box to keep their coins or something like that in, it's still a 10 or 20 pound box. So for three pound, it was a good buy. Now, in this business, nobody knows everything, and I'm the first to admit I make a lot of mistakes. Um, but I also gamble. 
And I don't mean I go down and bet on horses and things like that, because I don't. This job is enough of a gamble for me. Now this next piece I bought, I paid £150 for it. So it's not a small figure. And I still, to this second, don't know if it's real or if it's a fake. I'm still on the fence, was it right or wrong? But if you don't take gambles sometimes, you don't get no way. It may be a wrong one. Um, it needs more research, but I'm going to show you in just a second. But either way, I'm having a valuable lesson I'm learning. And if it does turn out to be a good one, then there's money in there. But have a look at this. This is known as a carpet bronze. It purports to be by Bergman, Franz Bergman. Um, the photographs will show you it much better than what uh, me holding it up here will. Now it is a signed piece, it does have the Bergman foundry mark. And the quality I can tell you now is absolutely spectacular. And I mean spectacular. Very minimal paint loss, just tiny bits here or there. Um, just real, real good quality, unbelievable casting on there. Um, I'll splice in the photographs now and then we'll get back to having a look at this and what else I found. Okay, so you've seen the photographs of the bronze and you've also seen the close-up of the mark. Now, I was 50-50 on a fence when I bought it. I've since put it on to um, an antiques forum to ask for advice and uh, second opinions. And the trouble was, I've had half a dozen on one side and half a dozen on the other side, so I'm still no better off. Um, some people are all saying, yes, the quality of the bronze is perfect. But they didn't like the mark. Other people are saying yes it's 100% right um, and one or two said it was a later repop. So I done some research and had a look on eBay and I found one from a seller who sells Bergman bronzes on eBay all the time and it's got multiple Bergman bronzes on there and to be honest with you the majority of them are unquestionable with good crisp marks and Bergman backwards and so forth and he's just put one of these up for sale it's been up for sale for about four or five days and so far it's reached 150 pounds but we'll go and have a look at that now in just a second okay so um i'm going to show you now the bronze that's on ebay so this is the bronze that's actually up for sale on ebay as you can see it's almost identical to mine same finish on the base there's the Bergman stamp. That is not as clear as mine. It's upside down, but that's not as clear as the one I have. Mine is much clearer than that. Um, there's the uh, close-up of the face. The top, everything. It all looks good to what I've got. Now this seller, this one is up to £151 with eight bids. And it's not just one person bidding, there's three bidders. So eight bids, three bidders, up to £151 with four days, seven hours to go. So if you're looking for yourself for a cheap bronze, jump on and bid on this. Uh, but if I view his other items, he's actually got a few Bergmans on there. Items for sale five. This is another he has up for sale. Then what happened there? Let's try that again. Right. So this is another carpet bronze he has up for sale. So he d he knows what he's doing. He handles Bergman regular. Now this is what people were on about um, was a proper Bergman mark or a crisp Bergman mark. And granted, it is a that's a good looking mark. But they don't always come out clean. 
Now this spare mine's off the same seller. This one's only up to 102 pounds for the same time to go. So what does that tell us? There's obviously people on there that believe that's real. The seller believes it's real. I believe it's real. Uh, he handles enough Bergmans to know what he's talking about. And if you went to his sold items, um, just out of curiosity, items for sale and then sold. I'll show just to show you how many Bergmans he sells. There's a Bergman dog. There's a Bergman dog. There's a Bergman Russian coal painted bronze. He sells a lot of Bergman, so he knows what he's doing. More Bergman, more Bergman. Now, if he was selling copies, these buyers wouldn't be coming back. Which then takes me... Now, I don't know who the seller is at all, period. Um, it looks like he sells really good gear especially Bergman bronzes. So I just use this one because that's the only one I could find on eBay at the moment. And the mark was no better than the mark I had on mine. So I'm up in the air still. The reason people, some people felt it might have been a copy was because the mark wasn't very good quality on the Bergman foundry mark, but the quality of the casting was unquestionable. So I don't know. I still don't know. I'm still not confident enough to put the Bergman bronze up for sale until I know one way or the other. So this is a bit of a uh, puzzle. So, um, what do you think? Do you think I done right? Do you think I done wrong? Uh, 150 pound is a lot of money for a gamble, but you know what? It's a beautiful bronze either way, and I can live with it if it does turn out to be um, a later edition just in the Bergman style would be a beautiful bronze just to keep in the house and display. But um, to be honest with you, I don't know myself because the one I showed you on eBay, he is a legit dealer selling a lot of Bergman. So he knows what he's doing. And my Bergman foundry mark is better and clearer than his. And the quality is second to none. Honestly, the quality is bang, bang there. So I don't know. Feel free to leave your comments. Um, I am open to criticism. I don't always agree with uh, some of the comments, but you know what? I'm open to listen. And I have made mistakes in the past and changed my descriptions to suit. Would you have paid £150 for it? That's the question. But what can I say? It's, um, I'm not without courage <laughs> or stupidity. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm uh, gonna look forward to your comments on this beautiful bronze, on whether you feel it's a Bergman or not, feel free to leave a comment. Other than that, um, do you have a favorite? The barometer was a big shock, the boot was a shock. So you see some nice pieces again today, um, and some of the prices were really cheap, and then you got the one out and out gamble that we don't know about. So, I won't sell her until I know, or till I feel comfortable selling it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.